Violent storms across the southeast killed at least 45 people over the weekend. 11 people killed in North Carolina were from one county. Nearly 70 homes were destroyed there as well. Tornadoes were responsible for 20 more deaths in Virginia, Arkansas, and Alabama. The Storm Prediction Center says it received at, at least 200 reports of tornadoes, although some were probably the same one. Parts of northern New Jersey are flooded after a few days of heavy rain. The city of Wayne got more than four inches over the weekend and had to close roads and interstate exits. The rain pushed a handful of rivers to flooding. The biggest concern is the Passaic River, which runs through major towns like Newark and is expected to run over two and a half feet above its banks. This is part of the same storm system that led the to tornadoes in the south and midwest last week. Well, luckily here in Athens, we aren't experiencing those kind of floods, but uh, it does look a little bit cloudy outside. Let's see what the weather is going to do the rest of this week. Justin Sampson's over in the Weather Center. Justin? dry as of a week as we would have hoped for out there and out there in the city right now there are some very light sprinkles going on here and there around the city but not quite enough to bust out the weather gear just yet if we take a look outside right now you can see it's just a little bit gray out there the sun is peeking out a little bit as i mentioned there's very light sprinkles going on but it is 62 right now fairly warm out there you can see some people in jeans some people are also wearing shorts if you take out something a little more heavy you're going to want to peel it off later because the temperatures are going to jump up luckily if we take a look at our current conditions in Athens, humidity is at 40% right now. Wind is pretty calm right now, about 8.5 miles per hour. Pressure is just under 30 inches, and visibility is at 10 miles. Looking at our almanac, the daily average today, we're not quite there just yet. It's 66, but we are going to jump up above that later, luckily not getting down to our low of 37. The record high for today is 87, a little too hot. We're not going to hit that, luckily, and also not hit the, hit the record low, which is 21. We've been dealing with that frigid weather for too long last quarter. Sunrise, came, sunrise was this morning at 6.47 a.m., and it'll go down tonight at 8.09. Taking a look at local temperatures, or actually temperatures around the state. If you go up north, it's getting a little bit colder up there. You see it, Toledo's got the coldest temperatures right now, 40. If you go on east over to Cleveland, it's 42 right now. Canton's got 43. If you travel down I-71 to Columbus, it's 63 degrees. One degree better in Dayton at 64. Cincinnati's at 66 right now. And as we mentioned, Athens is 62. Looking at Ohio radar right now, you see we do have a system coming through here, but it's mostly in the north and it's actually passing right now. Luckily, Athens didn't catch too much of that, but we have some more on the way, as we said. Going to the U.S. radar, as we said, we have that system coming in from the west. We have a little more going on in the mountains right there, but that's going to come catch up with us later in the week. Going to our day planner today, as we said, the temperature is going to jump up a little bit, but unfortunately the chance of rain and thunderstorms is going to as well. 68 degrees when you're picking up your kids from school, as we said, rain as well. 6 p.m. tonight, 70 degrees and rain as well. Tonight, we got a 50% chance of rain. It's going to be a low of 51 tonight, and the storms are going to jump up. If you're looking to catch some high school or Bobcat baseball, you're definitely going to want to check the forecast because there's a good chance those games might be postponed. Looking at tomorrow, the chance of rain is going to jump up a little bit, 70%, but the high is also going to jump up a little bit. It's going to be 73% or 73 degrees. Looking at your four-day forecast, well, as I said, it's not going to be as dry of a week as you would have hoped. Uh, the only really day you're going to want to get out there and maybe have a cookout, toss the pigskin, whatever you want, that's going to be on Thursday when it's just going to be cloudy, but the sun's going to peak out and then the rain is going to come right back on Friday and the temperature's just going to dip down a little bit. So not the best week, unfortunately, to go out there and have outdoor activities. It just seems like the rain's not letting up. So it looks like we have a couple of days to get through the rain and then we might have a, a few nice days after that. Hopefully, as I said, it'll pick up nice weather on Thursday, and then hopefully the weekend we'll have some sunshine once again. Yeah, we hope so. Absolutely. Thanks, Justin. If the rain has got you down, some live music might help curb the Monday blues. See who's playing at Casa Nueva tonight and other events in Athens in today's community calendar.
Well, it's not something you think about in the spring, but I know we had some football going on at OU this weekend. Uh, Danny English is here to tell us about sports. Danny? That's right. Although the college football season is six months away, it's never too early to get a preview. Athens Midday reporter Rob Schreier was at Saturday's annual spring game and discovered some new wrinkles for the 2011 Ohio Bobcats. Redshirt sophomore quarterback Tyler Tettleton didn't win the starting job with the Ohio football team at the annual green and white game. That's not my decision and uh, hopefully I've given the coaches enough to, to, uh, for them to decide that. But uh, no, I, I feel like I've, I've done uh, pretty well in this offense and uh, gotten everything down and, and hopefully led these guys to where we can be successful this year. But he did turn in another showing proving he's capable of claiming it this fall. Tittleton hit 11 of 21 passes for 151 yards That's and two six. touchdowns as the offense scored 20 points against the defense. Head coach Frank Solich says his experience from the past two seasons is paying off. Uh, I think he's shown a great deal of poise and confidence and um, you know he's been in our system now for a couple years. That time uh, has allowed him to really feel good about what he's doing in, in, in our offense and that's showing right now. Redshirt freshman Kyle Snyder, competing with Tettleton at quarterback, finished 5 of 12 through the year for 65 yards. Like his counterpart, he avoided any interceptions and picked up a team-high 44 yards rushing on 11 tries. One of the benefits of the spring game scrimmage format is that coaches can place any situation on the field, a benefit for the new no-huddle offense. Solich and his staff are changing the culture on offense to pick up the tempo. The goal to get more snaps off and give the defense fewer seconds to recover. It's going great so far, um, you know, being fast paced, keeping the defense on their heels, it's going really good. It's not perfect, but, uh, uh, but for the short amount of time we've been doing it, I, I think we're ahead of most teams that, that put it in like we did. Rob Schreier, Athens Midday Sports. The Bobcats will complete their spring practice schedule this week at Peden Stadium. The season officially kicks off September 3rd at New Mexico State. The spring game previewed just part of the team's strategies for the upcoming season. For scoring drives and complete stats of Saturday's game, check out AthensMidday.com. And the high school baseball and softball teams are now well into their season, even with, the, even with the weather adding some chaos to scheduling this year. As of right now, all local schools are scheduled to play, but the rain could cause cancellations. Alexander takes on Athens High School in both baseball and softball at home in a rivalry game. Athens baseball is looking to remain perfect in the Tri-Valley Conference. Meg's baseball is looking to remain perfect overall as they host Nelsonville, York. Again, rain is expected, so contact your school to see if the games will be played. The Bobcats softball team had a hard day yesterday, losing both ends of a doubleheader against Western Michigan. Emily Wethington got the loss in the game, giving up five runs in five innings. She also struck out with a runner on second in the seventh to end the game. The final score was 6-3. to three. The Bobcats got off to a fast start in game two. Paige, Paige Kamizis and Jordan Payton both hit home runs in the first two innings to give the Bobcats an early lead, but the Cats couldn't hold it. Western Michigan got five runs in the fifth and won the game 8-3. to three. The Bobcats ended their six-game losing streak in baseball with a 7-5 win over Northern Illinois in the first game of their doubleheader Sunday. Ohio then dropped the second game 19 to 10 as the Bobcats bats finally woke up after scoring only 17 runs over their six game losing streak. Dan Ward had two home runs on the day going five for eight with six RBIs. First baseman Tyler Imadi was impressed with the offensive explosion. Um, the Bobcats got out to a 6-0 lead in the third inning and never looked back. In the second game, the Bobcats, Bobcats held a 9-4 lead in the fourth, only to see the Huskies score 10 runs in the fifth. Uh, and on to the pros, when LeBron James left the Cavaliers last year, he effectively killed Cleveland's hopes in sports during the winter months. But with Easter less than a week away, the Cleveland Indians are trying to resurrect those hopes. And their savior may just be Grady Sizemore. Sizemore played in his first game in 11 months after he had knee surgery last year, and his first game went well. In the third inning, he nailed a ball into the stands to give the Indians a 2-0 lead. He also had a double in the game. The Indians won 4-2. They are 11-4 on the season and are leading their division. The Reds are also atop their division, despite a rough patch playing the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll start off in the eighth with the game tied at six. Andrew McCutcheon steps up to the plate for the Pirates with two on and two out and tattoos one to the left center 
to give Pittsburgh the lead. The Reds only needed one run in the ninth, and with the bases loaded, Drew Stubbs hits one high, far, and right into the glove of Pirates center fielder to end the game. The Reds lost 7-6, to six, and the Pirates have now stolen two of three games from the Reds. They will meet again tonight at 7. Well, it's good to see that uh, baseball is up and running. Weather's not affecting that so far. And I'm uh, really happy to see the Tribe is doing well. I know that's my favorite Cleveland team. Mine too. I, good riddance to the Reds. No. Oh. Uh, if you've ever seen Alfred Hitchcock's film, The Birds, beware. This clip looks like a real-life version of the movie. Check it out as this flock of slender-billed grackles attack the people at this bank parking lot in Florida. Workers say the birds began nesting on a ledge outside the bank about four years ago. Each spring, they get a little territorial as they try and protect their babies that are nesting in, on the ledge. The workers and people in the lot can't do anything to get rid of them because the birds are on the endangered species list and hunting them would be a criminal act. That's all for Athens Midday. Be sure to watch News Watch at 5.30 tonight, where we will have an update on the Holloway case. And be sure to tune into Athens Midday tomorrow to find out how to get the most of your bicycle in Athens. Have a great day.